say hey everyone it's maria recruit here from all things real estate so what do you think are there certain red flags you should be looking at when you're trying to select a tenant and maybe what we should be doing is listening to their stories a little bit closer to find if those are the kind of people we want to rent to so what not to do when selecting a tenant and i have a property property manager jay shaw who's been on my show this is part eight jay can you believe it eight weeks i've had you on my show i mean you know you've shared so many wonderful tidbits about how to choose a tenant so today I thought let's have some fun with it. and let's talk about the stories you and I are hearing because I've heard some good ones this week and last week since the last time we spoke and I want to put a smile on all the landlords faces because there are so many now that still have people living in their homes that refuse to pay even though the tenants are getting paid by the government which was a mistake the government should have given the money right directly to the landlord instead these people are keeping this money and not paying rent. I don't know if you heard of many people like that, but I see hundreds of people and I read their stories and, and I really feel very, very badly about it. So let's look at some of the fun things and what, the, what you know, the funny stories we're getting lately. And uh, I'm going to let you start, Jay. Nice to see you again. Yeah, thanks thank for having me. Forever. Hard to believe it's eight weeks. I know. I can't believe it either. Oh, my God. I feel this like is we're deep in a cave and we've, uh, you know, every week you come and check on me to make sure I'm still there. <laughs> That's right. I poke the bear, right? I poke <laughs> the bear. But, I mean, you've, you've given us such wonderful tidbits. I just don't want the, start, start, the show to stop. And for anyone who's missed any shows, just go on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe, like, and share my YouTube channel. It's called Real Estate Media News Network. You can see the logo at the top over there. So please, by all means, subscribe and watch all the videos I've done with Jay. I'm uploading videos almost every day now because I'm producing one video or even more. Actually, today I'm producing three. <laughs> I'm I'm just I just you know I'm just going forward here, but today is May the 20th, 2020. We've just passed a long weekend, and we're getting closer to the end of the month, where people are going to start moving around and looking for places. So let's talk about the stories you're hearing, Jay, and I'll tell you 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 tell me yours. I'll tell you mine. There we go. Right, the, the stories that I hear. I think the biggest thing, you know, I talk about this a lot is that you can get a lot of information out of people either on the phone or on uh, or at the property. And I think the biggest thing is just ask open ended questions. Uh, for me, I, you know, I, I'm curious by nature and I mean, I tend to ask a lot of questions. I had one property where this was last winter and we were trying to fill it and we had a nice couple go through the property. They looked at it. And, uh, and they were like, oh, this would be great and wonderful. And I remember I was in the, I tend to stand in the kitchen and I asked the questions. I'm like, okay, what, uh, you know, so why are you looking to move? And uh, the guy said to me without missing a beat, he's like, oh, our landlord, he's, you know, an angel and this, and I'm taking him to the board. And I'm, like, <laughs> and, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's terrible. Oh that's terrible. What happened? So then he keeps talking. He tells me more of the story and I'm just like, oh boy. And I'm thinking to myself, just stop talking. I'm like, oh, that, that's awful. You shouldn't have done that. Oh, I know. That's why I'm taking him to the board. And I'm like, huh. And the, he's like, oh, can we get an application? Oh, absolutely. I'll send you yeah. an application. Right sure. Away. And then he was, one, he was one of the guys where it's like after a while, they just kind of go away. Well, this guy followed up with me about three, for three weeks straight. Hey, I just want to know what's going on with my application. Hey, you want to go what's on? And we were really busy. I just kept telling him, oh, we're really busy. We're still reviewing the applications. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for obvious reasons, it was kind of a giant red flag. So we didn't really go with him. We wished him the best of luck in his search. And can you imagine if somebody else would have taken him on? Well, someone like, did. Someone yeah, did because someone did. he went away, right? Yeah. And that's, that's the thing where you have to ask these questions and keep an open mind because if you don't, then, you know, that's what happens. Yep. You actually invite trouble into your home. If you're not willing to take the extra step to listen to what the people are telling you and just ask them, like, for instance, I'll tell you what happened this week. This is so much fun. There's a lady who called me up and she wanted, oh, I love the place because I sent her a video, you know, so I sent her photos. I sent her a video. Oh, I love this place. It's a perfect spot for me. I said, so, um, so where are you working? And she told me, well, I'm not working right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So then I asked, well, where are you living? Oh, I'm living with my mother. <laughs> I, and she said, well, I'm 40 years old, and I think I should get my own place. <laughs> red flag, red flag, you know. 
<laughs> so what I said to her was, can I come and see it? I said, oh, of course, of course. But you know what? Uh, we will need to do a, a thorough credit check on you. And she stopped. She says, oh, yeah, you mean you're going to pull a full credit bureau? I said, oh, yes. Even though I don't, or maybe I won't, whatever, right? None of her business. I said, oh, yes. We do that with everyone. I said, we don't move people. We don't move fast. She says, how long is it going to take to do all of this? Oh, probably up to two weeks. I said, because we take, I say, we take our time. We don't jump. The first person who comes along <laughs> and we really, you know, do everything we need to do to find out that you're going to be in a safe place. And so she, she, she said, oh, I'll get back to you. I said, fine, <laughs> I won't get back to you. You know, so that that's that's an example. It just happened maybe yesterday, the day before, you know. So that's a red flag when they say yeah. I'm still living with my mother, my family, but I'm 40 years old. And then what the other thing that they're doing now too, Jay, is saying, well, I, I've been at home with my parents, okay? So, I mean, like they're 30 years old or something. Well, you know that's a lie, right? I mean, come on. So instead of you finding out who they really lived with before, that's what they're pretending to do is live at home. Mm -hmm. Or the same thing with people on Airbnb coming through saying, oh, I just want to stay for a couple days or I just want to stay for a couple weeks because a lot of Airbnb people are running into long-term bad tenants that are moving into their home and they can't get them out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and those, you can ask questions. You have up to 24 hours. I wouldn't be doing instant book with those people at all. Say, you know, I need to know more about you, especially when they don't have any type of history. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And, um, one other story that I have, I had a gentleman uh, in the summer, he wanted to apply for one of our places and he was dragging his feet and we responded and we followed up with him. We said, listen, we need an application. He's like, well, I'll fill out the application, but I don't want you to pull my credit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm like, well, why is that? He's like, well, you know, I'm going through a split and my mortgage broker told me not to, you know, pull credit mm -hmm. because it's going to hurt me, hurt my chance. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. well, like it's an inquiry. Um, yes. We, it's a policy that we have to, we, we, as part of our application process, we pull everyone's credit. He's like, well, how about I give you $500 not to pull my credit? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> exactly. So you know what? A, a landlord who's less experienced than you and I are would take them on maybe. That's how they get into trouble. Yep. All they do is see that wad of money. Well, that's the last you're going to see of that money. That's you know. So true. So true. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And there was another one that, uh, oh, yes, I know what happened. Um, they came to the home. They really liked it. And so I said, well, you know what? Um, I will speak to your last landlord. I mean, that's I have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. That and another person. So I said, just send me their name and phone number and, and I'll get in touch with them. And they didn't send anything. They didn't follow through. And then they said, oh, we've changed our mind. So I asked them, so what made you change your mind? And they never they never got back to me. So it had something to do with wherever they are right now, something's going on over there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and and even on Facebook uh, Marketplace, that's a really good place to see if you like those kind of people in your home. I mean, they're going to have, they have their profile. And if all they're doing is swearing and showing tattoos, not that I've got anything against tattoos, tattoos and not working and using all the cuss words. I mean, honestly, what they put on there, I think, no, I don't think I want that kind of person in my home. You know? Good thing I didn't show you any of my tattoos, Maria. Otherwise, you never <laughs> You know, or I have a dog, okay, all right, because some homes I can I can take that on because they've got wood floors, right? I won't do it in carpets. So what kind of a dog is it? Oh, it's 35 pounds, you know, it's well-behaved and all of that. They're and all well-behaved. Well well Even you, you're well-behaved, right? <laughs> and then, uh, then I say, well, then, you know, if you're going to come because it's part of your family, please bring the dog with you so I can see how it behaves, right? Does the dog ever come? Oh, I, they don't. They never make it to my place. Well, that's my point. The dog never comes. Right? The well-behaved dog. <laughs> the person, neither the person nor the dog comes. Yeah. Okay. Get back to you. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, I have to get. Well, I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> More like I want to think about it, not you. Yeah. <laughs> you need the place. I've got the place, right? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. There was even a guy that called me a number of times, and every time I told him we, we what we need from him, he says, "Well, no." 
uh, then, then you know you can hold that money and and I, I you know I don't want for, I don't want to give you first and last. I said well, I'm sorry. We we're just because it's coronavirus. We're not changing our strategy. Mm -hmm. We prefer to be empty mm -hmm. than have you come in. And that's the last one I'm going to see. I said sorry if you're already arguing. You don't want to give me last month's rent. He said oh yeah because then then I'll never get it back. I said well no kidding. <laughs> You know, you sign paperwork. Oh, I just want to stay for a month. I said, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm yeah. not doing it now, Jay. Yeah. Too much work. Too much work with the coronavirus. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Well, your costs as well, right? Like, I mean, the, the people don't realize that the cleaning costs are yes. astronomical. Yes. So it's like you kind of have to, you know, hold those back a little bit, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I mean, this is a business too, right? And, it is. It is. Yeah, it is a business. And um, I was talking to um, a couple people this week that have people that decided not to pay for their rent. They just said, no, I'm not going to pay. It's going to take you a, a year to get rid of me. And I did ask the person who was having trouble with this, this, this tenant, did you pull a credit report? Oh, no, I didn't. See, yeah, yeah. that is necessary. Well, the biggest thing is to have a process, right? Even for like the small independent landlords, they, they listen to me. They're like, well, you have a management company. Of course you have yeah. a process so your staff can, can do that. Well, we documented, I documented the process when I was an independent landlord managing mm -hmm. my own portfolio. But sure. the biggest thing now is to have that process and not to deviate from it. Yes. And the yes. biggest, you know, and, and the other piece of that is don't, like you alluded to it, is that a lot of landlords get duped or, you know, persuaded by the fistful of cash. And then they have problems down the road and they scratch their head and they said, I don't understand why it's not working out. And it's like, well, I mean, hello, like, did you follow the process from step one to step 10? Well, no, you went one, three, four, yeah. back to two, over to six. And oh yeah, well, they gave me more money not to pull their credit. I'm like, hello, that's, that's a giant red flag. But I think the biggest thing is that, I mean, I hate to say it, is that like, you know, for, you have to have a regimented process. There has to be, you know, a systemized process so that you know, Step one, step two, step three. And I mean, you know, it's like this old adage. We, I think we've gotten all the landlords onto the fact that first and last month's rent needs to either be paid in certified funds mm -hmm. or needs to be paid, paid by email money transfer. Yes. Right? We're not taking checks. So we've got everyone to that point now, which I think is great. Yes. Now we have to get them to the point where it's like they have to pull credit. They have to you know, go through the process. They have to you know, do the due diligence, right? We are in a competitive market and yes, you have to move quickly, but that doesn't mean skip steps. Yeah, no. And that's the problem with most of them. And the other thing I've noticed, a lot of landlords are just lazy. They don't want to learn. They think it's simple to, to find a good tenant because then the tenant can say anything to you. If you don't prove what they're saying or disprove what they're saying, you're, into, you're in for a big, terrible ride. And mm -hmm. what I do is I always slow the process down when they want to move fast. I slow it right down on purpose to yeah. see if they have enough patience for me to go through the process. Yeah. If they don't, then I don't want them in my home because if they lose patience with me, they're not even my home. What are they going to do afterwards? So that's how I select them is how much patience do you have and how much follow up when you say you're going to do something, even just sending an email or, or we ask you to call us. Do you do that? I mean, I do all those things on purpose to see who I'm getting into my homes. Mm -hmm. That's not on purpose. I have, there's a reason, there's a regimen. And like I said to people wanting to move in fast, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go away from what we've been doing for 20 years just because it's the COVID or the coronavirus. No way. Even more so, I'll even become more diligent because mm -hmm. of what's going on right now. Yep. Yeah. No, it's true. Um, you know, and it's like, like you say, we don't just throw everything out the window. We have to do things properly because at the end of the day, it's like once they're in, it's hard to get them out. That's right. Or impossible. And yep. they'll live there for free. And I know you have uh, a number of people that get in touch with you on Facebook like they do with me. People who are, you know, call themselves property managers or want to become property managers. I think a lot of them are just doing it because it's sexy. It's sexy to be a property manager. They don't realize the work that has to go into it. Well, I hate to break it to you, Maria. Being a property manager is, is probably the least <laughs> sexy job ever. I know. I'm doing it myself. I know there's nothing sexy about it. So when somebody says to me, I want to become a property manager, I think, oh, my God, you have no idea if you've never done it before. And what I'm noticing, a lot of people are not even talking. I mean, investors that before the COVID were really sharing a lot of information and talking about, you know, going forward, buying more properties, they've become silent. And I think part of it is because they have terrible problems with the tenants living in the homes. I think, um, 
I, I would challenge you a little bit on that point because I think okay. there's people out there that are still buying. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would agree with you that people are becoming a bit lax. Yes. And that's concerning yes. because at the end of the day, it's the fundamentals are there if you mm -hmm. put the process in place. Um, you know, we've talked about rent collection in the past. Like, I mean, uh, I feel very fortunate. My company, 90% of our tenants have paid. Uh, there's only two uh, tenants right now that have not submitted anything. Um, and I manage uh, about 100 properties right now. Yes. So wow. uh, two. Oh, that's really good. So that's good. Well. And, that, and that just, you know, goes to my point is that if you do the heavy lifting on the front end, you're less likely to have issues on the back end. I had one of my tenants, like, I think you know, you've probably seen it online. I'm sure some of your viewers have seen it online. Um, you know, these ads that tenants are putting out on rent strike. I mean, a okay. couple of my a couple of my tenants called and they said, "Jay, I don't understand because at the end of the day, there's this all all this rent strike and don't pay your landlord. But at the end of the day, when this is all over, I'm gonna have to pay my rent and I'm not gonna have yeah. that money if yeah. I don't pay it now." I'm like, "Yeah, like I mean, that's that's tenant education right there." And I mean, obviously, like this is a bit different than you know, as I say to a lot of investors, or sorry, a lot of residents, it's that this is a little different than going out and maxing out your credit cards on Christmas and then telling me January 1, you can't pay your rent. I mean, this is affecting everyone and it's not just tenants and it's not just the landlord. And I hate that terminology. It's, so, you know, colloquial, right? It's like, you know, I think we all know as investors, we, we all don't, you know, get in our beds and roll in the money before we go to bed. Right. <laughs> I don't know about you, Maria, but you've been at this a couple of years longer than me, but I certainly don't. I'm still not rolling in the money. <laughs> <laughs> my, money's in, my money's in my properties, right? Exactly. It's all assets, right? So, and I don't want to take them out now. I mean, I use them in my little piggy banks, like I'm just going to refinance yep. one of my properties that I've had for over 30 years. And so, what I, and this is kind of interesting because the appraiser, um, I phoned them up today. I spoke to my mortgage broker yesterday and we're going to fill out paperwork together. And they, I said, can I send a video that I've taken of the property and also my website? They said, yeah. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go and take photos because they're not coming around into the house. They'll go on the outside of the house, which is fine. So I said to them, please don't come yet until I talk to my gardener to make sure everything's in good order, right? That it looks pretty, at least on the outside. It's nice on the inside too. So they said, yeah, they would take the videos and they would take the photos that I've had. And because I have a website, I'll just send the website also, right? Yep. Yep. And having said that, everything's going through my mortgage broker yep. because he's He's the one that found the person who was going to be lending me the money. It's a private mortgage. So everything's going to go through him. So he looks at it to make sure we don't make any mistakes. So even when you get appraisals done, you, if you have a good mortgage broker, which I've been fortunate for 20 years, his name is Amit Pahuja, and he watches my show once in a while. He's out of Toronto with Lotus Lotus Loans. He's been, you know, he's been a godsend in my life. Uh, I speak very highly about him. He's like family to me right now, right? Mm, we know absolutely. him so well. I met him when he was in his 20s doing business. It's 20 years later, right? Now he has yeah. a couple of children, yeah. you know? We talk about this as we talk about the problems we're all going through. So everything goes through him. I don't have to rush anything. He's yeah. on the family person. He's the one that's going to guide the whole process. And what I like about Amit is that he never will get me into trouble. Otherwise, if he can't find the money, he will tell me up front, Maria, I can't find someone for you right now. You just have to hold off. So he's up front. He doesn't pretend to say, yeah, I can yep. find you anything I want, which is many mortgage brokers that are bad ones are saying, oh, yeah, I can find it for you. And then they can't find anything. And they and they got you. Right. Yeah. So that's another thing, too. You know, that's another thing we should be talking about in the future, about how to find the right mortgage broker for you, you know, and what you expect from your mortgage broker. They, mm -hmm. they that's part of the team. Like, I know you have your dream team. So do you use one mortgage broker only or do you use a couple? Uh, mainly I use one, uh, okay. and it's triaged, right? So it's okay. like we go to one and then if that doesn't work, what we do is he triages it to a couple other, um, mortgage brokers that are not from banks that are not broker friendly. So RBC, CIBC. So we start with him. If it doesn't go anywhere, he can't do the deal. Uh, you get a call from, you know, the contact at CIBC or the contact at RBC. So the files been passed to me. Here's here's where it goes, right? Okay, fantastic. Um, so that's how we do it. Um, you know, it makes sense to go with the same person because for a couple different reasons. One, from a from a credit score, you don't want to be running around town having your credit ding left, right, and center. Um, but secondly, you want to keep that broker and then know what you're doing so that they have a, a broad sense of like what properties that you have because if they're going to make a case 
to an underwriter and they have, there's a property that they don't know about, then it makes them look foolish, number one, and they lose credibility with the underwriter. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like, like a meat knows my credit history, knows everything, right? I mean, he has everything on file. I don't want to go to another person and start all over again. No, exactly. <laughs> Why don't you want I don't want to start all over again. What do I have to start all over again, right? Yeah. It's a waste of my time. Just like yeah. insurance that I call them up. I've been with them 20 years also. Same insurance broker, believe it or not. And I said to her, look, I want to, I'm not driving at all. I've only been out six times. And truly, that's all I've been out is six times since middle of March. Uh, can you lower the insurance? She says, sure, we can do that, right? So yeah. she knows again my history, right? Yeah. That's why I stay with the same people. Same with the banks, same, you know, with my credit union. They know my history, they know me, they know my family. Like that's what I want to do because I don't wait want to waste my time for a couple pennies more or less. Why mm -hmm. am I wasting my time? Yep, yeah. no, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's not, not always about the dollar, uh, the bottom no. line. No. Like that's no. the one. Yeah. And business in general shouldn't be about the bottom line it should be something you're enjoying i mean we all need money to make to live right but if you after all if you don't enjoy doing what you're doing let's say you're a property manager you don't enjoy it then get out of it right yeah. it's it, it, just get out of the business if you're an investor and you don't enjoy it anymore get out of it you know do something else i mean yeah. people stay with things because they don't see any possibilities but certainly with covid19 i think we've all seen that there's you know there's different ways of doing business we don't have to keep doing it the same way and I was talking to a real estate agent that I've known for a number of years, and she was saying, you know, I'm just doing everything online. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I actually interviewed uh, three um, agents, real estate agents. One, Sean Hartley from uh, Hamilton. I don't know if you right. know him. Yeah. Not, he's in my Facebook group. Then I, in, 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 the other one was from Rochester, J Man. And then there was another lady that, Nicole, that I, you know, that I uh, had on my show. And they were all young. I mean, it's wonderful to see all these people that are in business. And you can see they love what they're doing. And they've really changed their business model to go more online. Yep, absolutely. I think that's one of the things too, having the time now to, uh, you know, to reflect and I'm doing that in my business. Uh, yeah. and we've really embraced technology and have been since day one in our property management business. But like I'm, I'm doing some of the, the back end stuff that I need to do now, like yeah. getting the processes in place and, you know, creating, you know, uh, leveraging technology as much as we can and things like that. So, I mean, we have to evolve as, as an organization and mo more importantly, as an investor, yeah, you may only have one, two, three, four properties, but spend the time now while, we're, while we have the time to sit at home and document a process. What is your process for filling properties? What is your process for bringing people to the property? What do you do? Because at the end of the day, if something were to happen to you, God forbid, and you know your spouse or whoever you leave the, pro the properties to is now responsible for that, well, if all the information's in your head, you're no use to them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. spend the time now and, and document something. And I mean, the best way to do it is to sit with someone and be like, hey, walk me through what you do when you screen a tenant. Walk me through what you do when you go to a property. Walk me through what you do when you sign a lease with them. Those are the things. And it's like, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be it's just like bullets, 10 bullets. What are they? Yeah. And I know if they listen to the shows we've done, all eight of them, they'll find out a lot of that mm -hmm. because I mean, you've put it down on paper. I've seen that because I've, I mean, been to your, your um, um, when you've had your info sessions and I was there watching you, um, sh you know, show us online how, to, what's the best way of choosing the right person? What are the steps, right? The property, property manager, if you want to do it yourself. And when I started 20 years ago, I actually hung out with people that were really good in their property management, were in the business much longer than I was and sat down with them just like you did over mm -hmm. dinner, just chatting. Yep. And then they sent me their forms. I mean, that's how I learned too. And then I learned also by making mistakes, Jay. Yep. I made mistakes too, yep. right? Too. I can me still too. be making mistakes. I can still be making mistakes. Yep. But I try not to have mistakes that really cost me a lot of money. Yep. Right? Oh, my sucks. And one of them is getting the wrong person in my property. So yep. I prefer to be empty than to have somebody that I'm going to have trouble with. I don't want these phone calls to keep happening all the time about things. And you know what's interesting? I had some people moving into one of my properties just on May the 1st, right? And they kept sending emails to uh, 
you know, someone who was one of my property managers. And the property manager said, please don't send, don't send me texts, send the email to our office staff because they can take care of anything that has to happen. Like any type of, like you were saying, the first month is when they really find all the things that are not working in the house, right? So we told them, please don't text us because yeah. I'm not wasting our time on text. Send an email, which they did. And they've been very good that way too. They remember that. And then if they mention there's a problem because they did, then we ask them, please send us a video of it and tell us when it's happening. So because now we can't find people necessary to go into the homes. They don't want to go necessarily, right? So we said we try and try and do it that way and it worked out fine. Mm -hmm. So they kind of figured out themselves what they were maybe doing wrong, you know, it was, it was a pretty simple thing about a faucet leaking. And yet I know when I went to the house, there was no faucets leaking. So maybe they didn't know how to push in, you know, the shower, you know, um, contraption there, what they should be doing. So I've never heard back from them, and neither has Sarah in the office. So obviously they figured it out themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's always the toughest, right? And I think the first month is always, like I always say, it's a, it's the toughest to learn. Yes. But if you condition them properly, like same thing, we had, a uh, you know, uh, tenants move in on the 15th. They reached out last night. It was seven o'clock they're like you know i know you told us because i always tell our tenants like give it a week make yeah. me one less so i can send one person they're like we sure. know you told us a week uh but there's a leak under the sink and you know we need we need someone to come i'm like great so yeah. what we do is similar we say great can you do me a favor send me a maintenance request we've got a form built on our website here's the link send me a maintenance request and i'll have it dealt with they're like oh okay, great Within 20 minutes, they sent that maintenance request, followed up this morning. Listen, we'll have someone there. Uh, we have someone going out tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. See, so you have your system in place. System, right? But if you respond to that text message, you're enabling behavior. Yes. Right? Oh, yes. The biggest oh, thing yes. you want to do is get them off of this yeah. and get them onto documentation. Exactly. The way it's supposed to be done. That's real business, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, accepting texts is not doing business and i think again too many people don't understand real estate is a business it's a very expensive business mm -hmm. and it, it is those are very expensive um mistakes you can make that will cost you your own money may even cost you sleep that you don't sleep because you're worried getting the wrong person in they're not respecting the rules they're smoking when they're not supposed to right anything of that you you find out from the very beginning check you know check up on them find out what they're saying is true or not mm -hmm. like don't be uh, you know don't be a, a wuss let them know who the boss is this is your property this is your hundred thousand two hundred three hundred million dollar house whatever it is and you're letting them tell you what to do with your business mm -hmm. what's wrong with this picture you know yep. no, yeah sure. yeah so we're going to make it a really short uh, run today, but let's give, give us a, an update of what's happening in Niagara. Tell us what's going on in the real estate business in Niagara. In the real estate business, I mean, we're still uh, we're still we're still seeing a strong market despite what people are seeing. We're seeing uh -huh. um, we're seeing properties uh, multiple offers. Uh, we're seeing some. Um, last week, I saw one go for fifty thousand over over list. Oh, um, wow. So we're still seeing a very strong market. The second piece that we're seeing is that we're really seeing a lot of investors still come to Niagara. They're still seeing the value there. Um, we're seeing uh, Welland be very strong. We're seeing St. Catharines is steady. Um, we're seeing um, new markets emerge, Niagara Falls, Port Colburn, uh, even into Fort Erie. There's a lot of investors that are really curious about Fort Erie. And, you know, it's funny, Maria, like, I think you would agree, like five years ago, yes. um, real estate investing in, in the municipalities of Port Colburn and Fort Erie would never be put in the same sentence together. Exactly. Now we, <laughs> look in there. And I think those two markets are really kind of the next ones to take a look uh, at for investors. I mean, there's lots of opportunity there. And I think uh, the biggest thing is just, you know, it, it's not all doom and gloom. Like I think where we're going to start to see corrections in the real estate market are going to be in the larger municipalities, you use Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary, you're going to see municipalities such as uh, Alberta or not Alberta provinces like Alberta, Saskatchewan and Newfoundland that have a high um, reliance on oil. Those are going to be hit hard and you're going to see yes. you know, corrections from what I would argue is an over, uh, an overvalued um, market like Vancouver and Toronto, you're going to see those those come down quite a bit. 
even like even uh, cities like Oakville, I think, are gonna are in Mississauga are gonna be hit hard as well. So, um, you know, I think really if you're getting into real estate market or real estate investing, the model is very simple: buy single like starter single family homes. Because at the end of the day, if people have to you know do what they did in 2008 and walk away from mortgages, they're gonna need a place to live. Where are they gonna need a place to live? Well, they're gonna need a you know they're gonna need a nice house in a nice area. And if you're doing things right, that's what you're gonna buy. Yeah, and and also you know what I've always uh, bought purchased houses in nice areas. I you know I always bought nice buildings. Like if I if I if I didn't find the building attractive to me, there's no way I would put people in there because no. I have to believe in the product. What I did and and you know what I, I would suggest a lot of people doing. When I first started, I bought single family dwellings. Okay, that's what I did. And at one point, I decided to do um, um, uh, semi-detached because you can find some really nice buildings, semi-detached in very nice, uh, very mature areas. And I always went for the mature areas. And the, uh, Niagara has a lot of those really nice areas in St. Catharines, in, in Niagara Falls, you know, where people are really interested in purchasing in that area. Myself, I would purchase it because those are rentals, but I wouldn't want to live there myself. It's, it, for me, it's too closed in, right? I like, mm -hmm. like properties. Of space, right? Mm -hmm. And you're you're right about Fort Erie because I tried to buy a house there years ago, but my mortgage broker said he couldn't find anyone who believed in that area. And I said, "Well, you guys, you're making such a mistake. It's such mm -hmm. a wonderful area." And now I think I might be. I'm still looking at purchasing in different areas outside of Niagara Lake and Niagara Falls and St. Catharines. Um, and I may even go towards the area where you were, where you purchased your house. Do you still have your house on the lake there? In Wainfleet? No, uh, I do not, no. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. no, I don't I know that one, but I mean, there's there's a real need in that area, like in terms of Port Colburn, like anything that we have listed in Port Colburn, I either have not advertised it or it's been up and it's been rented very quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about just renting places out, but for yourself, if you want to purchase for yourself. I know someone who wants to move into Fort, um, no, Fort Colbert, but can't find a good place. Of mm -hmm. course, they can only afford a certain amount. Right. And of course, Port Colbert still is less expensive than Niagara Falls or Welland or say Catharines, of course. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I mean, there's lots of opportunities out there. I think the biggest thing is just focus, right? You, you need to and take the time now while we're all sitting at home twiddling our thumbs. I know the economy is, you know, slowly starting to open up. And I know, you know, some of us may or may not have kids at home. Um, but I think the biggest thing is spend the time now to figure out where you want to go. Um, look at your current portfolio. Do all the properties make sense? If they do, great. Stick with it. If they don't, now's the time to make some changes. Yeah. I mean, the market is so strong. People are still selling houses. So it's not all doom and gloom, regardless of what the, the media is sensationalizing. Exactly. Well, they, they make money with sensationalizing anything, right? I mean, that's how the, uh, the advertisers want more eyes on the pages. So right. they have to make something sensational. Otherwise, right. no one's going to be looking, right? It's true. But anyway, so just let us know how people can get in touch with you, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's more information on uh, my website, welcomehomepm.ca. That's my company. Um, you can reach out to me by email, j at welcomehomepm.ca. Um, two things I want to offer to your viewers. Um, I've got a couple of free reports on there, um, just with some information for those of you that are interested. Uh, maybe you haven't dipped your, uh, your toe in the water on real estate investing. So there's two reports on there, absolutely free, um, under our property management tab. So uh, first report is all you need to know about how to be a successful landlord. So those are some tips on, on really how to kind of take your game to the next level. Um, if you're looking for a property manager, um, you know, there's also a report on there on how to hire a property manager. So the mm -hmm. questions that you should be asking, whether it's myself or whether it's someone else, the key questions you should be asking um, if you want to get into property, if you want to hire a property manager. Mm -hmm. yes. If you want to reach out to me by phone, it's a 1-855-375-3300. Fantastic, Jay. Thank you very much for being my guest again and, and sharing your time with us and sharing your knowledge. So we just discussed what not to do when selecting a tenant. And this is part eight of our series. Jay has been kind enough to be on my show every Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we've discussed various aspects of get, getting to be yourself a good property manager. I mean, I think you need to know what you need to know to become a property manager. So then if you don't want to do it, then you could hire somebody else to do it. And you know, listening to Jay, what questions to ask the property manager. So Jay, 
is the owner of Welcome Home Management Company. And Jay is a very experienced property manager in both the Niagara region and also in Hamilton. So if you're looking for someone who will serve you well, and, and I've gotten to know Jay over the past five years, and I, I know I stand by him. He's a very honest person. That's the kind of person you want to be your property manager who lays it right on the line. And if you don't, if you don't appreciate Jay, well, you know, then go somewhere else. <laughs> But I certainly appreciate you, Jay. But I thank you for, once again for being on my show, All Things Real Estate with Maria Recruit. And we will see you again, everyone. Listen, happy investing, everyone. Take it easy. And just please watch our shows on Real Estate Media News Network on YouTube. Please sign, subscribe update and also share all the shows i have there I have over 60 shows on there jay would you believe it that's, that's <laughs> amazing that's amazing you know what you've been doing during the, the uh, coronavirus what a business yes <laughs> so i send you all my best jay take care enjoy the wonderful weather with your son all right and we'll see you soon. okay care. thanks for okay.